Now we're moving on with our request and dedication. No, that's not true. Actually, this is a request that I've gotten um, that I got a while back, and there was based on a tutorial I had done a few weeks ago where I used a graphic. It was kind of a f orangey, fiery, gel-looking type of graphic, and I got a number of people actually asking me how I created that graphic. Well, it was in fact a stock image that I had downloaded, but after messing with uh, some settings in Photoshop, I was able to achieve a similar effect right here from scratch, and that's what we're going to do here. So, here I have a document, and if you see it's under my image size, here it's a 12 by 8 at 100 dpi. Now I'll only show you that because if you're going to work this in a higher resolution or even a lower resolution, I just want to make you aware of where I'm working at, just so you can uh, alter your settings accordingly. So, here I have my image. I've got a background layer filled with black. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer right above that. Go into my toolbar. We're going to choose the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm just going to draw a box in the middle of my document right about there. I'm going to press Shift Delete, and we'll use 50% gray and go ahead and fill it. And we'll go ahead and deselect it. Now, I'm going to go into the filter menu, and we're going to choose Render and we're going to use fibers, but before you select it, do make sure that your foreground and background colors are set to their default black and white, as you can see right in here. If they're not, simply press the D key on your keyboard. Now, go into the filter menu, and we're going to choose render, fibers, and I'm going to leave my variance set to 10 and the strength to 8. But if you look at the way it's distributing the fibers on your document, you can click the randomize button. Now in this case I actually like what I'm looking at, but if you didn't, you could click randomize and it would still use these settings, but it would distribute the fibers in a very different way and it give you a, a different version every time you click on it. But I do in fact like what I'm looking at here, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Then we're going to go into the filter menu again and this time choose blur, motion blur. And make sure that we are going from straight up and down, which would be 90 degrees, so we'll set the angle to 90 and we're going to give it a long blur, so about a distance of 250 actually looks pretty good, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. So now I need to rotate this graphic onto its side, so I'm going to press Command or Control T, and we're just going to go up here until my arrows, you know, my cursor turns into a little bent arrow. I'm going to hold down my Shift key to constrain my rotation to 45 degree angles, and then we'll just click and drag that until it's completely horizontal. Now, before I commit this, still in Free Transform, I'm going to drag these handles out until they snap to the edge of my document. Now, still not committing, I'm still staying in free transform, I'm going to control or right click directly on that shape and we're going to choose in the menu here the warp tool. And I'm just going to grab these handles here and we'll push this one down here. Now, you can certainly experiment and do all kinds of different things here yourself, but let's go see what I can come up with here. We'll push this one over here. Maybe I'll push that there right about like that. Don't want to go too crazy because the next effect is where we're going to go really crazy on this. So once I've got that warped uh, the way I like it, we'll go ahead and press enter and there we have that graphic there. Now we're going to go into the filter menu and choose liquify. And here's where we're really going to go crazy with this. Now I'm going to use a brush size of around 200 and I think that looks pretty good. And brush density about 75 and the brush pressure about half, half strength at about 50%. Now what we want to do is kind of sculpt this graphic so it looks a little bit more like fire. Now we know that we all know that fire tends to have a little bit more flowing, more organic look to it. So that's what we're going to try to achieve by using Liquify here. And we're using this topmost tool in the toolbar, the forward warp tool, which just basically allows us to push the pixels around freely. So with my settings in place, let's go in here and start pushing this thing around. Now I'm just arbitrarily just nudging these pixels around, but what I am paying attention to is that I want to have some kind of, some peaks and valleys in here, you know, kind of dips in and kind of affects the uh, the interior a little bit. And I'm just going to go in here inside the interior and just kind of push these around and get a different result here. But I'm not going too crazy. Just kind of push that there and maybe I'll just push this one up here. Again, this is where you can just have a lot of fun and just push these pixels around and see what all kinds of different variations you can come up with. But I think that is not bad for what we're going to be trying to achieve here. Let's kind of push this. Let's go crazy with this one right here. Push it like right all the way across like that. Okay. So once I've got all that in place, let's go ahead and hit OK. 
And of course, depending on the speed of your machine, it may take a moment for this part to render. But then, there we have it. Now, we're going to take our smudge tool. Let's go and select the smudge tool in the toolbar. And using a relatively good sized brush, a soft edge brush at that, and setting the strength to around 50%, what we're going to do is really roughen out the harsh edges of this, of this graphic. And what you could, an easy way to think about the smudge tool is it's almost like a directional blur on a brush. So with that set at 50%, I'm just going to increase my brush size a little bit. And we're just going to paint along the edge of this graphic. And you can see what's happening to the edge. It's getting a little bit blurred. It's giving me a more organic feel, almost like firewood. Firewood? Huh. Anyway, again, I'm going to go along the top here. And we'll just push that around. And we'll just kind of nudge some areas here. And then some of these you know, peaks and everything like that, I'm just going to kind of push the pixels around just like this, just so, you know, kind of the, the way fire behaves. And we'll just kind of push that there and go crazy in here a little bit. And let's kind of brush out some of the detail there. Okay, so now I've applied that distortion and everything looks pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and create a duplicate of this layer just like that. Now, on this duplicate, we're going to go into the filter menu, we're going to go to artistic, and we're going to choose plastic wrap. That's right. Now you can start to see this is starting to come together. We're going to put that highlight strength all the way to 20, and we're going to leave the detail down to 1 and the smoothness to about 15. We'll go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go and change the blend mode of this particular layer to screen. Now, using that same smudge tool, I'm going to make the brush size a little bit smaller. I'm going to nudge some of those highlighted areas of that graphic. But because we're in, bl in screen blend mode, you can see it's kind of interacting with the, uh, the layer beneath it. Kind of giving a sense of movement, a little bit more organic feel. It almost has a sense of depth to it as well. Just like that. So well, let's say we've got all that in place. Well, we need to give it color now. Obviously, it's all, it's, we're still working in you know black, white, and gray. I don't really want to do that. So. We're going to create an adjustment layer, but it's going to be a solid color adjustment layer at the very top of my layer stack. And what we're going to choose is a really hot orange color, right about like that. And we'll click OK. Then we'll change the blend mode of this layer to overlay. And then you can see that, start, that effect is really starting to take shape here. What I'm going to do is highlight this layer, the bottom most layer of my graphic, double click on it to bring up the layer styles. And we're going to activate an outer glow. And we're going to look, we're going to change the color of that outer glow to a similar orange that we filled that adjustment layer with. And I'm going to drop the opacity to around 50, but I'm going to increase the size quite a bit till we start to get a really, really harsh glow there. Check that out. It's looking really cool. And we'll click OK. Now, to intensify this effect a little bit more, I'm going to highlight that layer we applied the plastic wrap to, and I'm going to bring up my levels dialog. Because it's a grayscale layer still, all our color is on this one layer. We're not affecting the color, just the lightness and darkness of this layer. But if I make this darker, watch what happens to my graphic. Look how it starts to get a little bit more depth and a little bit more life to it, almost like it's got that really cool gel effect about it. Let's move these sliders here, so there we go. That looks pretty good. So now if I wanted to, can hold down my shift key and shift select both of these layers, bring up free transform, and let's just stretch these out a little bit. To get those edges out of the way and ultimately giving us a really cool fire effect. Now, I could go in here and individually manipulate these layers a little bit more. I could go in here and push these flares out and just have a lot more fun generating this effect, but I think you get the idea of starting with nothing and generating that kind of gel, gelish, fiery effect there. But what I do, what I want to do is encourage you to use this tutorial as a basis to start your own, create your own variations of different types of fire effects, and certainly experiment with different colors. I mean, what if we went in here and changed this to, to maybe a really harsh blue? I mean, look at that. That's giving us kind of an interesting effect, just like that. So we'll cancel out of that. So, I mean, 
all different types of things you can do. And because all these graphics are on their individual layers, you can have a lot of fun coming up with different variations. So there you have it. Have fun with it, and see you next time.